To All the Jural Assemblies Part 15. Coroners by Anna Von Reitz. The office of county coroner, like the office of county sheriff, has to be filled and is in fact one of the primary offices of the American government. Why? The coroner is the only public official who can remove a sitting governor from office. Strange, but true. The logic of this is too convoluted and ancient to go into, but there is a long history confirming that of all the public offices, the office of the coroner is the office of greatest trust. This has in part to do with certification of whether or not people are alive or dead, and this is why when Britain and the Pope colluded to defraud our government in breach of trust, they conscripted and licensed all our doctors and nurses as uniformed officers, Territorial Federal Code Title 37. They then imposed upon the medical professionals with coercive force to participate in the infamous dead baby scheme. Our doctors are forced to certify the birth and death of human persons, what we call afterbirths, and to seize upon the expelled tissues and DNA, which the collaborators in the for hire government register as unclaimed chattel property. In this way, the perpetrators lay a secretive and unconscionable commercial claim to our unique DNA. We are somewhat hampered in our efforts to put an end to these schemes and an end to these absurd and abusive commercial claim activities by the simple fact that all the doctors and nurses are being coerced to participate in this fraud under pain of losing their licenses and ability to earn a living. It becomes a chicken and egg proposition, in order to fully function, the actual land and soil jurisdiction government requires a coroner, who must be a competently trained medical professional, but almost all the medical professionals have been trapped into accepting a license and subjecting themselves to the British territorial United States government instead of retaining their private status and functioning as state nationals. Thus, they wind up having to support a system they hate and which enslaves them, and most do not know that they have a choice and aren't actually required to have a license. All that licensing is being done by foreign, for-profit corporations and applies only to their subcontractors, contractors they have to actually hire or induct formally into the military before they can demand any licensing. Once again, we are being entrapped by our own ignorance and willingness to go along to get along. The doctors and nurses and dentists are actually being hoodwinked into complying with laws that do not and cannot apply to them, and they tie the proverbial noose around their own necks by applying for and accepting a license in the first place. The situation is irritating on all sides, but there are ways to get around the need for a competent coroner. Retired medical doctors and nurses who no longer use their license can return it and serve as county coroners. Men and women trained as physicians' assistants in the course of their military training who, for whatever reasons, did not choose to make use of that training in private life can serve as coroners. Realistically, all that is needed is someone who has reasonable training and experience to be able to certify that a man is dead and to give an educated opinion of the cause of death. At first, anyway, the actual county coroner serves only cases involving members of the state jural assembly state citizens and those who have recorded their state national political status with the state jural assembly recorder. This makes for light duty at the present time, but as more Americans wake up and return home to the land and soil jurisdiction of their birth, the workload for the actual county coroners will increase. As well as recording deaths, county coroners have an even more important function from the standpoint of the Jural Assembly, recording births. As new babies are born into the families of state Jural Assembly members and also into the families of state nationals, the event and the details need to be recorded on the land and soil jurisdiction of the actual states. The actual county coroner's office certifies both births and deaths and has them recorded by the state jural assembly recorder's office prior to serving notice to the territorial government by providing a copy of the public record. In all these functions, the state jural assembly and its members are the actual public and the for hire territorial state of state corporations are private enterprises under contract to provide services to us, it is in fact the exact opposite from what most people assume. Most people assume that the for hire corporations are the actual government, because they have been unknowingly conscripted into the foreign jurisdiction of these corporations, and subjected to their private law, so that these corporations which are merely providing governmental services appear to be the only actual government and their statutory law appears to be the only form of law. However, once your state jural assembly rears its head and its members are properly documented, the actual public and organic law comes back into view and into play and the cobwebs and deceits fade away. 
Please hit subscribe, like, share and get ready for many more Anna Von Wright's videos.